Hello there, everybody. This is Collar, and welcome to set two of uh, Case versus Tsinghua University. We've got here um, Willow, the Orange Zerg, playing for uh, Tsinghua University, and for Case we have uh, a 103 EKG, a EKJ. Um, so numbers guy, uh, the Korean guy playing for a Korean. I'm going to call him 815, actually. So we got 815 playing Protoss for Korea, because uh, I'm not going to be able to remember 103 EKJ. So anyway, numbers guy, uh, 815 here, Protoss. He's choosing to play Protoss instead of Zerg, as he usually does for KTF. Um, and and uh, Korea is down 1-0 here, uh, going into the second set. And this is, of course, Neil Medusa. Um, which really, I don't, I don't know if it's done anything to the balance of Protoss versus Zerg. I think really the only uh, matchup that it's really affected, the fact that you could build the middle, is uh, Protoss versus Terran. Where, uh, of course, the Terran likes to do their slow pushes, and they're much more able to do that uh, by building turrets in the middle. So we've got here a standard uh, opening here for 103. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to remember to call him 815 either. So uh, 103 here. Um, what's he doing here? Huh, is he going to do something tricky? We'll see. Nope, he's going to get lost scouting, actually. <laughs> That's what happened. So, uh, 103, um, unable to get there <laughs> as fast as he could. Meanwhile, oh, look at this. We've got ourselves a 9-pool here. 9-pool gas for Willow. Willow going to take the, uh, really, the fastest possible gas uh, of any real build. And uh, we'll see what he manages to do with it, if he's going to go for a speedling run by or not. It's a definite possibility. Meanwhile, we've got a forge going up, and uh, we're going to have 103 spot this uh, nine pool, so he should be able to deal with this on time, without any problems. We'll see what follows up uh, after this, um, whether there's going to be an expansion or whether there's, uh, well, wh of course there'll be an expansion, but whether um, there'll be two hatches or three hatches before he goes to lair. Well, oftentimes, uh, if someone kills off the scouting probes, they can actually go for some kind of fast cheese. Um, and we're seeing the people, uh, the people, the drones being bowled off of gas. Uh, that is as expected, of course. Willow is going to scout uh, correctly, of course, with his first overlord. And uh, let's see if he decides to kill the probe. He does kill the probe. Ooh, that's a little bit of a mistake for 103. I think he could have kept it alive for a little bit longer. Five links moving out instead of six. I guess just in case there's another probe sneaking in. Maybe it's on purpose. Well, well I have no idea, but, you know. Probably is. And, oh, we got another probe trying to sneak up. Oh, it gets destroyed again. So Willow doing a good job, and uh, 103 kind of doing a uh, not-so-impressive job keeping his scouting probes alive. Meanwhile, he is going to go for an expansion right now, of course. And uh, we're going to see perhaps a Ling run by, um, still coming from Willow. We'll have to see. He has eight Lings right now, and his speed is almost done, of course. Yep, speed almost done for him. And uh, let's see how good this timing is. Actually, 103 has taken off all the probes from blocking, so this could be really bad for him if he doesn't suddenly move a bunch over. He's got one more over. He's building a Zealot. I think if uh, Willow went right now, 103 could be in big trouble, and Willow is going to go right now. Perfect timing for him. He's uh, not going to try to kill the cans. He is going to do the standard Ling run by. He gets by with five. Uh, five is enough to do a lot of damage inside the base here, and we could be seeing an early uh, decision here in this Protoss versus Zerg uh, between Tsinghua and Kaist, and once again, it does seem like Tsinghua is, uh, you know, is holding uh, is holding the sword here over um, <laughs> over the, the, the Korean team's head, and, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm certainly surprised by that. I think probably most of you guys would have predicted that the Korean team would have taken these, this, this whole series quite easily, uh, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Right now, we're seeing 103 in huge trouble. He's He's not even uh, really doing much of a, a good job with his pro micro at all. Really, um, to be honest, even worse than the, the other game uh, where we saw that. Um, you know, like last game where we saw the Zealots. Uh, but anyway, right now these Zealot Zerglings are still just uh, being incredibly annoying inside of 103's base. Let's take a look at what Willow is doing. Willow going for a third hatch. Okay, actually, that's not so amazing. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually a little surprised he didn't expand at the back. I thought for a sec that was a Hydralis den, because that would make the uh, most sense. And uh, it wouldn't make sense to pick up that mineral only behind your main. There's really no advantage in not taking it. So these these lings have killed a very large number of probes right now. I have not been able to keep count, but um, it's got to be, you know, close to 10 probably, um, which is just, just horrible for 103. 
Really, I mean, the, this is... Uh, wow, I can't believe this. 103 really um, should have put up a pylon by now and uh, and built a, a cannon because it's, you know, obvious that he does not know how to micro with his zealot and probes to be able to kill these lings. Oh my god, this is just brutal watching this. And Willow with an APM that is double, um, you know, literally double right now, 103s. And usually that's okay in the mid game, but in the early game when there's a micro situation, you don't want to be at the side with half the... Uh, APM. <laughs> you really don't. And we're seeing how disastrous it is. Oh my god, once again the lings get passed. This is just ridiculous. This is like watching Tom and Jerry here, and these lings are Jerry. Um, Alright. So it looks like finally we've got uh, <laughs> we've got these lings out, so um, only one ling left. But what's going on here? Whoa! What is going on here? What the hell is this? we got five hatcheries going up inside the main. And a creep colony for Willow. Willow certainly, um, I guess maybe, what he was thinking, I love watching amateurs, but probably what he was thinking was, huh, I've got too many resources in the bank, so what should I build? Oh, hatcheries. So he's going to build a ton of hatcheries um, because he has too many minerals in the bank and he wants to use them. Another hatchery! Well, okay, that's the fifth hatchery. I, I guess this is the opening of a, a five-hatch Hydra build. That would be the only thing that would remotely make any sense at all for Willow to follow us up with, and it doesn't make any sense that he doesn't have a hatchery back here. But that's okay, I think right now he's far enough in the lead that uh, he should be able to win this game, although he's not really mining or doing anything right now. Um, so both players playing a little bit off, to be absolutely honest. But 103 is definitely, you know, the one who is going to be way behind here. Um, he has way fewer uh, workers than Willow does. And Willow, of course, will be able to mass-produce whatever the heck he wants pretty soon. Um, <laughs> once again, though, he really needs to start mining. He's just mass-producing drones for now, I guess. And he's not even mining gas. Um, and it looks like he's going to put down a 6 hatchery and finally decide to expand. I don't know what he's doing with all of his APM, I guess. His APM really is not actually that high because uh, he can't control all of his workers um, correctly. Uh, so I think he did lose a couple of lings in the front, too. Not sure exactly what happened. All right, Cybernetics Core going up for 103. This is going to be quite interesting because Willow could have done better than this mess over here. <laughs> he could have gone for, you know, some tech or even a normal, like, 3-hatch Hydra Rush, 4-hatch Hydra, 5-hatch Hydra Rush, but instead he's gone for 6 Hydra, six hatches already. I mean, I guess he could just go Matt's Ling and try to win it with that. He might be able to. I don't know. Um, there's only two cannons still, and, and really, you know, Whatever forces he, he makes will be enough, because he just has a big economic advantage. And uh, 103 right now, uh, looks like he's going to... Okay, looks like Willow's going to do a run-by on 103 once again. Um, 103 trying to put up some uh, cannons here in the main. I actually think it was quite possible for Willow just to have killed the two cannons in front and ended this game already, but it looks like... Um, Instead, he's just going to catch a couple more probes, two probes going down. Meanwhile, um, 103 is going to finally get a cannon up, and wow, I, I don't know why he's not where his zealots are, but obviously they're not doing a good job of protecting their probes. Um, oh, the cannon goes down, too. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, that is not good. Um, <laughs> we got a lot of pro, a lot of drones moving out. This is definitely the most amusing set I've seen so far. Uh, I have no idea what Willow is who Will is and what he's doing. Um, he's evidently not getting any upgrades for his Hydras, though, which is what he should be doing. And 103, meanwhile, had four... He had a couple of Zealots the entire time that um, that the cannon was getting attacked and all that in the main, so I'm a little bit surprised by that, but that's okay. Uh, we got a Corsair coming out, and in fact, we still don't have any anti-air for... Um, for... <laughs> Willow, but Willow right now is going to be building a lot of drones, actually. I was going to say he's going to build a lot of Hydras, but no, he's going to build some more drones. I guess he really wants a strong economy, um, so he's just going to build all drones. Actually, by the way, this is too many drones. For those of you who are wondering, should I have this many drones as a Zerg player? No, you should not. <laughs> uh, wow. So, right now, Willow is definitely playing oddly, but um, it seems to be that uh, it will be good enough to beat... 103, unless really 103 really, um, you know, shows uh, some some very nice, I don't know, some kind of DT Corsair build that just rocks everyone's, you know, just rocks the hell out of Willow. That's going to be the only thing really that I can see him doing. Um, are these three evolution chambers? Oh my god. Willow, uh, obviously not necessarily the best Zerg player himself, but certainly he's got good Ling Micro. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he likes his hatcheries, man. He really likes his hatcheries, and he likes his evolution chambers.
It would be amazing if you went for a four evolution chamber build. That would be truly baller. Uh, so what do we got building here? Oh, we got some Hydras. And uh, I don't know what upgrades he's got going, but he obviously has triple upgrades going for his, um, you know, for his fighting units. All right, looks like he's got probably, uh, so he's got speed. I don't know if he has range yet. Maybe he does have range. Um, I would assume that by now he would have uh, researched it. But like I said, I think this is going to be good enough unless he um, doesn't build a Overlord, which would be bad. If he doesn't bring an Overlord, rather, over, that would really uh, screw up his uh, mid-game assault here because obviously there's DTs now out for 103. And uh, we are seeing speed upgrading for um, for Willow. And Willow getting a really early Queen's Nest, by the way. So I don't know what Willow is thinking about. Maybe like two base, two and a half base uh, ultras or something like that. Um, I have no idea. And he's getting a second layer! <laughs> this guy really likes getting buildings. That's what his build is. I'm going to get drones and lots of buildings. Because buildings are good. I don't even know if he knows about the fact that he's getting a second layer. Um, especially because he's getting it so late. Like, I don't know what the point is. But, uh, evidently, he... Um, is going to be okay, because right now we're seeing just a tiny force here coming out for 103. 103 is still economically way behind, of course. Although he has um, slowly managed to close the gap between uh, him and the Zerg player. I really don't know... Uh, what is he doing? He's gotten three pylons on the ridge. Oh man, what is going on? How is this Korea and Tsinghua? I mean, this is a Korean team versus Tsinghua. Are you sure we're not watching, like... I don't know, D-level players in iCup, but no. I mean, <laughs> right now we're going to see a huge swarm of uh, Zerg forces here, all really just Lings and and Hydras. And, uh, <laughs> the, okay, so I guess he waited until he had plus one Carapace. Um, not that uh, plus one attack is done or anything like that, but <laughs> there's a ridiculous number of Lings, and uh, this is going to be very interesting. I think this ridiculous number of Lings is going to be enough to break through. Uh, there is only one Dark Templar, unfortunately, for 103. I don't know what he was doing not building a High Templar or Dark Templar. Um, in fact, he's got a good amount of resources in the bank uh, that he shouldn't have at this point. And, uh, okay, so there is speed upgrade to Overlords. WW coming from the Korean. And so Willow with his, uh, I guess, kind of like Sauron-esque build. I wouldn't really call it a Sauron build, but whatever it is, a mass building build. Uh, manages to take the game and uh, put up... Uh, put Tsinghua University up 2-0 in this series. Uh, we'll be moving on right now to Game 3 uh, on Coliseum. Thanks for watching.